So the previous lecture, we saw that switches show up very naturally, uh, especially in robotics, where we're going to switch between different modes of operation. And what I want to do today is talk a little bit about the models that we're going to use to describe these phenomena. And the models that we're going to use are called hybrid automata. And these are models that contain both the continuous dynamics, meaning the x dot part, and the discrete switching logic that says, oh, if you see an obstacle, you should switch to an obstacle avoidance behavior, or something like that. Now, uh, what this means is that the discrete logic will be modeled as a finite state machine that moves between different discrete states. So that's the discrete logic. But this is a finite state machine on st steroids in the sense that inside each state we have a continuous dynamics lurking. So having said that, what we need first of all is the notion of a state. So x, as before, is the continuous state of the system. This is the physical state typically of what our robot is doing. But then what we're going to do is we're going to add a discrete state that I'm going to call Q. And Q is going to tell me which different continuous mode I am in. So my dynamics now can be encoded not as x dot is f of x comma u, but x dot is f sub q x comma u, where this Q now tells me which mode am I actually in. And what we're going to do then is transition between different discrete modes in a state machine where here I'm having mode Q. So really, x dot inside that mode is going to be f sub Q. And x dot inside this mode is going to be x dot is f sub Q prime. Now, these are called transitions, right? So when you're jumping between different discrete modes, you're making transitions between different states in the finite state machine. Now, what we need to understand is, when do we actually make these jumps? Well, for that, we need something called a guard. And the guard is something that checks whether or not you should jump. And then we're also, <coughs> excuse me, also going to add something else, which is called a reset, which is going to tell you not when you jump, but where you end up after you made the transition. So the guard condition is a condition that tells you when it is time to jump. So let's say that I, I am in mode Q, and I want to jump to mode Q prime. Well, what I have is I have a guard that says, if x belongs to this guard, let's say that this is, I'm going to switch from one gear to another gear. Uh, if my RPM is above you know, 3,000, then I'm going to switch. This is a guard condition that encodes when it is time to jump. Now. When I'm jumping, I may actually reset the value of my state. For instance, if I'm dropping a ball whoop, onto this desk and it bounces up, it loses energy in the bounce. So what we're doing is we're subtracting a piece away from the state at each bounce. This way of messing with the state at the moment the transitions occur is called a reset. So if I'm going, I'm here in mode Q, la, 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 and then my guard is true. So I'm moving to Q prime. Well, what's happening here is that x changes. For instance, x is now, let's say, the old x divided by 5. That would be a guard that says, oh, I'm getting only a fifth of the energy somehow after this jump. So what we need are dynamics, the individual dynamics, which are called modes. We need transitions, which tell us, tells us uh, which discrete states are we moving in between. We need guards, which tell us when we're going to make these jumps, and we need resets that tell us how these jumps end up uh, affecting the state. So if we put all of this together, we get a rather arguably messy looking thing, but it's very rich. This is the hybrid automaton, singular, or hybrid automata, plural model. And the way this works is, let's see here. We start with x equal to x naught. We end up in this mode, which is q equals 1, where we're evolving according to this differential equation. right? OK, if, in this case, x belongs to g12, then x, we're going to move over into this mode. And on our way, we're going to reset the state. Now the state is here. This is my dynamics. I'm in q2 mode. Well, if G21 becomes true, I jump this way. But if G23 becomes true, I jump that way. Let's say G23 became true. I jump this way. I change my state, possibly according to this reset map. I have a third dynamics. Q is equal to 3. And then when X enters G3, 
31 guard, it jumps back into Q equals 1 with a new possible reset. So this is the general model that we're going to work with. Now, it looks a little bit messy, but it's actually really not. In most cases, these models are going to look rather uh, innocent. So here is, for example, a very, very simple hybrid system. Uh, it's a thermostat, or it's my idea of a thermostat. Typically, the way a thermostat works, at least cheap ones, is you set some temperature you would like. The thermostat is on. Uh, the heater is on until you reach that temperature, or typically go a little bit above it, and then it turns off, and then you cool down, and then when you're too low, you turn it on again. And you've heard this all in buildings with, uh, with heaters or that turn on and off. So what we're doing is we're heating it up until we're comfortable and warm. And in fact, this is my desired temperature. And you typically want to add a little slack that says that I'm going to shut this thing off when I'm at whatever I want to be, 70 degrees, plus a little slack, let's say. By the way, this is 70 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, you Celsius people out there. Let's say it's 20. Uh, so now we're above 20 Celsius, and now we're going to cool it down. And then we're cooling it down until we're, in this case, below, well, 20 degrees Celsius or whatever it is in Fahrenheit, minus epsilon. And the reason why we need this epsilon is if we didn't have it, then this guard is true, and then this guard is immediately true, because if t is equal to t desired, we're just going to start spinning around indefinitely here. So the little epsilons are important. So this would be one way in which we would model a thermostat. There are no resets here, uh, just guard conditions, because we're not magically making the temperature jump just because we're changing the heaters from, from on to off. Well, here's our gear shifter, right? Well, we have some dynamics. V is the velocity of the car. We, we're now in first gear. This is our dynamics. U is how we're smashing the, the brake or the gas pedal down, so this is how we're driving. When we have the RPM above some threshold, then we change gears. We switch up to second gear, which is here, right? So now we're having the second gear. If we keep pressing the gas so that the RPM goes up beyond, beyond some C2, then we switch to the third gear. Apparently, this car only has three gears. Uh, but we go to the third gear, and the same thing here with the downshift. And notice here that I have C2 prime and C1 prime and C1 and C2 here. This is, again, because you want to build in a little bit of slack. This is my way of hiding an epsilon inside there so we don't immediately transition between, between gears. So this would be a hybrid automaton gear shifter. And I'm not writing out these dynamics because the, dy the particulars aren't that important right now. The important thing is the switching logic and the way the, the guards operate. Well, finally, let's look at the behavior-based robotic system. What I'm doing is I'm running the robot, so let's say that X is the position of the robot, according to a go-to-goal behavior. So F go-to-goal of X. This is me having designed that. And when the distance between where I am and where the closest obstacle is, when that's less than some D, meaning I'm too close to an obstacle, then I'm going to switch to another mode or another behavior, which is avoid obstacles. So now I've designed my avoid obstacle behavior, and it's safely taking me away from the obstacle. And then when the position of the robot is greater than some other distance, d prime away from the obstacle, then I switch to goal to goal again. And the way this would look is, let's say here's the obstacle, here's the goal, here's my robot. Da, 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 da. My robot is doing fine. Here's a ball of radius d. Once I get in here, I'm going to switch to a goal to goal behavior that's going to take me away from the robot. Let's say here is a larger circle of radius d prime. And when I'm here, I'm going to be safe, and I'm going to switch to a goal-to-goal -goal behavior. So this is what would happen in practice if you ran this hybrid automaton as a behavior-based robotic system. Now, unfortunately, things aren't all rosy in the hybrid world. And what we'll see in the next lecture is that things may actually go wrong, even though we are meaning very well when we start building our systems. So the next lecture is a danger beware sign that we need to put up wherever we are designing hybrid systems as opposed to standard, standalone linear time invariant systems.